So quick disclaimer on Demisode episode 4 of the cooking show. <laughs> this cooking show has been super ghetto. It's been, um, it's been an experience trying to do the best with what I have. Um, sometimes the things are lacking and everything has to be taken in one or two takes. But um, it's going to be a compilation of stuff. So stay tuned. So hopefully this works here. So today we're going to be um, trimming up our own boneless pork loin. My birthday is on Monday, and we're going to marinate this for Sunday so that we can celebrate. And you can save a lot of money if you go and you buy a full pork loin rather than something that's already been processed by the butcher. And um, I'll show you how to do it yourself. So first things first, as you have this here, you're going to want to you're going to want to cut one end of the bag. So that all the juices don't leak out. I mean, I could cut, slice it down the thing. Well, actually, before that, first things first, you need to get yourself a nice sharp knife. I have here, I have a all-purpose survival knife. Uh, this is a LT Wright Design uh, Hidden Woodsman Knife for my friend, uh, put up for my friend Malcolm. So what we're gonna do, first things first, is we're gonna cut the top. Never cut towards you like that. But I'll, I mean, I'm just gonna break a whole bunch of rules as I'm, as I'm doing this, okay? A little slit just for all intensive purposes so that everybody can see it's so nice to have a super sharp knife now we have the pork loin we'll remove the pork loin Let's see if I can get a little closer on a nice big cutting board Let's see if we can remove it without getting the juice everywhere try to keep the juices all in the bag Helps that I'm doing this outside so that we don't have to really worry about the mess. So I have this big old, big old pork loin here and all the juices hey. still left in the bag. No, what's up? I can just edit it out. No, I don't, no, I'm good. I don't want anything. I'm good. So we have here, we got the pork loin out of the bag. No mess. Uh, I'm using two cutting boards because it's so big. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get your pork loin out like this, and there's two types of fat on any kind of animal thing. I mean, this uh, this is really cross training for any kind of butchering. I learned how to butcher things um, through friends that I know, as well as just experience by by getting deer. But there's two different types of fat on a, on an animal that as you, as you trimmed, you're gonna have to look for it. I mentioned before in the steak tip, tip episode, there's regular fat, and then there's something called silver skin. I can get a shot up close here. My best. You'll see up in here, it's very shiny and very, very, very tough. And that's silver skin. And that will make it really, really hard to, to be able to eat. But regular fat, especially pork fat, I mean, fat means flavor. You can leave some on, but for all purposes here, I'm going to trim most of it off. So I'm going to start by cutting this into manageable pieces. Um, Jose, how big do you want these? Big enough for for three. We so, do we do a piece for three, and then a piece for four, just in case we have a guest. So so what do you think? Like that is too big. Um, a little bit less. Right here, there will be a good piece for three because if you see when we slice it like this, like this, like this, like this. Yeah. That's a good piece for three. Okay. So for I'll, me I'll measure a few of them because I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna cut. Uh, well, I'm gonna cut this thing in half first. Yeah. Just so I can, so I can work with it. So what I'm gonna do before I cut it into portions is you're gonna grab one end here. This is gonna be the fat end. And one hand will will peel it up. I don't know how close I can get to be able to see. I'll just cut to the to the right shot. But you'll see here the fat. What you're going to do, this layer, you can use your hands. Don't be afraid to use your hands and really get in there. But you're going to pull up as much as you can. Once you get a healthy lip, you're going to start start by by cutting into it. 
I guess I'll just take this first first layer of fat off. It's nice if you can do it in one one swoop. And if you get in under the under the fat, try to cut the least amount of meat possible. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be difficult. I'm not a pro, disclaimer. I'm trying to do this at an awkward angle so that everybody can see and at least have a little bit of knowledge. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by just getting the getting a majority of it off. What you're gonna do is with a nice sharp knife, now see this is where the where the sharp knife comes in. I can get that fat back without actually taking up any meat. Rip that piece right off. With pork, pork has so much fat that it's it's harder to do this. The fat on a beef is a little bit more tender. Oh, that'll still come out really good. I use, I don't know how much the camera can catch on this, but this is silver skin. So what I'm gonna do is once I get this first layer off, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get underneath it and fillet it a little bit to be able to get it. And I'll cut to a time lapse. Dogs can eat raw chicken, raw pork, they don't get sick. That now you see I got this little flap here. I pulled up on the flap. I got as little meat as I could. And the sharp knife just goes right underneath. What you're going to do is you're going to pull the flap tight and just keep keep filleting it until you take off all that silver skin. Let's see if I can get this a little closer so everybody can see. Fillet it up just like that. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention now, you have the big tenderloin here, as we can see. I'll flip it this way because it's a little prettier. You have the big tenderloin, but then you have an extra, an extra strap, which you're going to want to do, like this strap here. I'm going to cut that off. I guess the secret to really butchering something up is to be able to see where the where the tendons and the and and the fats join and the, the natural muscles stay. And then once you separate the muscles, that's all it really takes. A good eye and some common sense and a sharp knife. <laughs> <laughs> That right there, you know what that is good for? Yeah. What's that? To stir fry. We like make beans. We use that stir fry first, and then put the beans and yeah. then cook. So you don't have to add no fat. I mean, this is this is this is pretty clean. I don't have to I don't have to do any more on this. Yeah. This is nice. I'm just gonna pull pull this little this last little fat off. Most of the time, it pulls right out. That's how you know the difference between fat and silver skin. Usually the fat will just pull right off. But now you, now you have a nice clean piece. I mean, I could trim that up a little bit, but a little bit of fat doesn't hurt anybody. It's flavor. What I'm gonna do is now portion it up into the right size portions. One, two, three, that's, that's about it's about that, no? A little, little bit more. Yep, right here, that's good. We'll keep we'll keep that, just like, just like that, this. That, that will be the even the the fat we we'll keep the fat separate what we do we're gonna chop those fats in little blocks mm -hmm. every time cooking we just grab a handful oh, just use yeah we we'll just use it as pork fat yeah, yeah. just the pork fat okay now we're gonna trim up this second piece here and we'll cut to it peeling up the flap 
is, is the most important part. If you can get a good flap on the first one, you can you only need to do it once. Let the weight of the weight of the meat do the rest. All cleaned up. Took me five minutes at the most. Get all that fat off and marbling. This side of the piece has a lot of marbling in it. Uh, leaving some of this fat like this, leaving some of that on like that, that's fine. That'll add flavor. But if you don't like it, you can always just string it right off. Pulls right out. And then we'll just make a couple portions. Take some of my, my normal portion sizes that I did on the last one. Just match it. You can see where that that tenderloin piece swirls and comes to comes to that little extra extra thing, that big mar that marbled piece. I wish I knew what that was called. Anybody know? Comment below. All right, so here's the finished product, well butchered, set up for portions to freeze. I'm gonna have to do that again, I guess. So that's it for the cooking show. The lighting out here is uh, very poor. My iPhone is fixed though, so this is all shot on an iPhone. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. My hands, my hands are slippery. <laughs> be, be laugh right now. Good, I'm gonna. And a shot knife. <laughs> 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 oh god.